by Miss Sarah Lucas, and she is in charge of the primary school with Brian Bacon. And I'm thinking, like, yes, I know his name, I know his name. So hello to both of you, and um, let's start with Chris as the principal of the school to give us an update of how the second week for kids in lockdown has been as the head of the school, but also as a daddy. Chris, how are you? Uh, yeah, good. Surviving. Um, it's been it's been good. It's been a really good week, actually. We've sort of built on lots of the things that were in place in the first week. We've changed things. We've tweaked things to make sure that the kids have more routine. The kids have more interaction with their teachers, like Miss Sarah. They have videos. They have um, virtual lessons. So it's been a really good week. Really positive. The teachers have been amazing. The, the amount of work and effort they're putting in has been extraordinary. Students have been really supportive, so it's settled a little bit. It, you know, the first week was just crazy because everything technologically and um, was thrown at us. But this week, I think we've built on what we what we've been doing. And personally, how is it the challenge of being normally always out to being at home and having that time and doing more coordinating from a chair than physically at the school? Yeah, that does take a bit of getting used to. Uh, you have to be quite disciplined. Everybody in this has to be disciplined to make sure they keep to a routine and their working hours. Uh, and then those working hours have to fit with, with my son, who's in year three, and, and he's got his timetable within primary. So it's just a case of, of constantly watching the clock and then kind of um, eating and working in between, really. But everybody's getting, I think, into that, into the routine, and, and their lives now have become different. But Again, it's, it's just kind of making sure that routine is key. Otherwise, it's going to be tough. Miss Sarah, you've got a lot of um, youngsters and now everything is online. Do they know how to connect online? I mean, I know it's a brand new world, but how young do they start? Yes, I mean, to, to really reiterate what Chris is saying there, we're doing the same thing really in primary. And it's amazing that with the little ones, they just learn to deal with technology even better than the adults do. So actually, they have adapted to this new way of learning incredibly well. Uh, obviously, the, the very little ones, I mean, in primary, we're dealing with children from three to 11 years of age. Uh, the very little ones, even as young as three, are accessing our learning platform. And they, of course, need support from their parents. But even just yesterday we held our first Google meet with children as young as four and five years old so that we could all see each other virtually have a catch-up and they were all putting the mic on silencing it and pinning each other to see each other and it worked really really well um, and like, like Chris has said this the, the first week was a little bit chaotic naturally all getting used to the new system what we were doing at home I think we were quite privileged at our school because the government had hinted that this was going to happen and EIC did jump ahead and we actually already had this platform up and running a week early so we were able to teach the children to use it in school a week before actual lockdown so it's gone very very smoothly I'm very proud of them we all are. Wow I mean it's just I'm so impressive and congratulations on being so ahead of the game and so ready to jump on board, but I'm wondering, Miss Sarah, the children have obviously responded beautifully. Is it a little harder to bring the parents in line, get them to do homework and get involved because they're normally working? I know some of them find it kind of a little bit more difficult to adjust. Yes, I, I mean, our parents have done a, a really sterling job. Uh, yes, we've had problems along the way dealing with technolo technology issues more than anything, really. But the parents have really jumped on board and been tremendously supportive. They're constantly emailing through children's work so that we can feedback, because feedback obviously is such a vital element of teaching uh, to keep the children motivated to let them know that they're going down, down the right route with their learning, giving them some tips on how to improve. And they're being really good at that. I mean, in primary, 
primary, we are receiving daily work emailed to us that we can go through with the children, give feedback to. And it, then it's not so daunting for the parents as well, because I mean, I know myself, I'm also a mother at the school. I've got two children at the top end of primary. And when you're looking through grammar with, um, you know, subordinate clauses and uh, fronted adverbials, you know, you sometimes have to <laughs> rack your brains a bit. So support from the teachers has been remarkable with, 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 with helping that uh, journey at home. Oh, it's just fabulous. And it's lovely to meet you and to hear you speak. And hello, because I forgot to say hello at the beginning. So excited, hello. anxious to speak with you. Chris, do you think that this is maybe the way education could go? And it's a, almost a way of expanding the horizons of the school by embracing online studying in this way? Uh, in short, yes. I, I think it will change the way the school operates. Um, we're all reflected on our practice now, how we interact with the students and the parents, um, the way our lessons are delivered. Can we give the students a little bit more independence in their tasks to go and watch something to complete a task and then get back to us? There's so many, the way that the staff conduct meetings and, and we feed back to each other. Um, so many different things that we're going to come back at the end of this and think right we need to look at lots of practices and policies and timetables maybe even and think okay we've got a now an experience that we never thought we would have and experiences to reflect on so i think for every workplace schools as well it, it's going to be kind of rewriting certain rules and certain things that schools have always had and let's be honest sometimes schools are quite stuck in certain things every school and this has just meant that we've had to build every school has had to build essentially a new school and that gives you freedom to think oh maybe we could do that in a different way so that's a long answer but basically yes it will it will certainly change the school miss sarah as a mother how are your children um reacting to the situation how are you explaining what's going on how are you align their fears well, you know, children just amaze me every day with their ability to just adapt and just get on with it. You know, they, they, they haven't learned to moan and groan like us adults sometimes, sometimes do, you know. And my, my own children have, have amazed me and hearing feedback from other parents, it's, it's the same thing. The children are just getting on with it. And well, this afternoon, we, we're going to go out and applaud for the children across the nation at six o'clock. And they really do deserve it because they are just so... Um, eager to just get on with things and give their best and I feel that from my children absolutely at home with the support obviously of their teachers who really a grand applause to the teachers uh, doing their jobs from home at this difficult time but they've just got on with it they really have that element has not been hard at all and the fear that you mentioned I mean that's down to each parent I guess how, how you relay what's going on to them but uh, we, we've been quite honest, my husband and I, with my children, and, and explained, obviously, without being uh, too scary in the details, but just saying what's going, going on out there, that there is a virus, we've got to stay at home for a while, but you know what, there'll be light at the end of the tunnel, we will go back to normal, so. In the meanwhile, Chris, life as we know it is on hold. What does that mean as far as the exams are concerned? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, at the moment, there, there won't really be an examination season. So there, there won't be formal exams where kids sit down and, and, and they take tests. So every examination board is working together to come up with a new set of rules of how we give these grades and how do the kids get into university. So that is the big topic for this week and the next few weeks. And every school has got to get their head around that. And that comes with a challenge. I, I agree with Sarah. The kids have been amazing. And on top of that, the examination year groups have had to sort of adjust to the fact that they won't be doing exams, exams that they've worked hard for for two years. And that's, that's really tough. But again, the students have been great. They've responded. And, and we're all going to work through that one. Every single school in the land has got to understand now how we get students to be awarded and allocated grades out of the school's control to some extent because the rules will come uh, from the government and the examination board. But it just adds another element in there of, OK, Let's, let's see how this goes. Chris, um, before we finish, some last tips maybe for parents out there with children at home needing to get some work done. Do you have any uh, feedback from your experience the last couple of weeks that could perhaps help? I just think keeping the kids in a routine and structure, really, you know, helping them to get up and get ready and find the right working environment, if it's the little ones, if it's the older ones, so that they feel there is a structure to their day. And then at the end of that structured day, they can disconnect. And, and that's important because the disconnection shouldn't be 
two or three hours on the Xbox or on TikTok or whatever, it's got to be that they properly disconnect. And, and parents have got, you know, have got a tough job with that. Um, so we're trying to support them with that. But I, I think really routine is critical and, and trying to push that as much as we can. And, and again, Miss Sarah mentions about videos and virtual lessons, even all the way through now, uh, primary from foundation stage. So um, that would be the best thing that we can, we can continue to push. Well, I can't congratulate you both enough. And Miss Sarah, it's a delight to meet you. What have you got planned uh, for the rest of the weekend and the coming days with your brood? Yes, well, I, th I think um, uh, count to 10 and then do it again, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but no, carry on, really. We, we've had lots of uh, opportunity to ask for feedback from the, the parents within primary about how they've been finding the learning at home. So we're adapting to their needs because obviously every family is living through this in a, in a different way. Nobody will be having the same perspective. And we're just trying to help them all, let them know that we are together in this. We have great sense of community in our school. We're in this together, here to help each other. And I think just transmitting confidence to everybody, carry on with what we're doing. As Chris has said, the routine, we've got a great routine set up in school now. Uh, do lean on us so that we can support you in helping your children to learn. Especially bear in mind, in our school, we are an international college and we've got a lot of parents who have maybe got very limited English you know and do get in touch with us and we can help you through it and give you as much support as possible but I would reiterate to everybody that th this is a tunnel we're in it's not a well there's a light at the end and well let's try and be people that we can look back on and be proud of when we look back on this because we will look back on it. I think that is just a beautiful thing to say and it's the first time I've heard both of uh um, what you've just said, and I think it is just lovely. It isn't a tunnel. Um, well, it, it is a tunnel, and we have to be proud of how we behave. Not like mm. the beginning, all that crazy shopping. But yes, I think those are wise words and ones we should remember. I look forward to chatting you with again, Miss Sarah. Congratulations. Enjoy your time at home with the family, and keep up the good work. Thank you. It was really great to meet you as well. Thank you so much for having us. My pleasure. And Chris. Any final words of wisdom for our viewers? I think Miss Sarah summed it up perfectly about just, mm -hmm. just we're going to reflect back on this and, and, and that's, a, that's a thing that we have to sort of embrace now. I think we're going to come out stronger really and, and think, right, okay, what can we learn? How can we sort of make society a better place uh, in terms of what we've, what we've learned really? Yes, because you were saying that you think a lot of people um, are going to be taking this time to actually reflect on their lives and yeah, I mean, it's, it's inevitable, isn't it? You've got time on your hands and you're going to be evaluating everything, you know, your, your career, where you are in life and, and maybe even, you know, not to get too deep, but the type of person you are and what you do and how you spend your time and do you help others enough? And I think businesses and family societies, you know, they are going to be a bit defined by how they behave in this period because it really does put everything like that under the spotlight. So, um, yeah, there's a lot to learn. There is a lot to learn. I'm going to finish with uh, Mr. Herod's words and like, let's make sure when we look back on this, and we will, that we feel proud of ourselves. Very proud of you guys. Congratulations. It really is admirable how you're keeping up everybody's spirits, keeping the school going up and uh, just being a good example to us. So take care, stay safe and stay home. Hashtag better together. <laughs> Thanks, Thank a you, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. A lot of people prefer to take their own car when going out at night. However, when it comes to time to go home, that might not be the safest or wisest option. For some, just one glass of wine could put you over the legal limit, which means if you drive, you could put in yourself or others at risk. If you find yourself in this dilemma and think possibly you should not be driving, you can just give Linear Director a call. They will order and pay for a taxi, which will take you and your fellow companions who were with you in the car home with up to a 25 kilometer radius, as long as you all fit in that one taxi and you're all going to the same place. You can even ask for them to pick up your car and take that back too. And this is seven days a week from midnight to 7 a.m. and up to four times a month. And this is obviously all in addition to the fabulous insurance that you get with Linear Director. Every evening at 8 p.m. I'm going out to my balcony, as is most of Spain, to clap and make as much noise as possible to show our gratitude for all the medical staff who are literally risking their lives 
to save hours. And it's not just the medical staff, of course, everyone who's out there, the police, the truck drivers, we're all in this together. So please join us at 8 p.m. every single evening at an open window, on your terrace, in your private garden, wherever you're allowed to be, but outside and make as much noise as possible. I think you'll quite enjoy that if you're the only one clapping very soon, others will follow suit. Let's pray that this will be over soon. Stay safe, stay home. Us apart. Poison arrows shoot straight to your heart. We can change if we try. A real pleasure to chat with got now quite a recognised face on Marbella now, Oscar Calleja. He runs the football camps, particularly in the summer and normally coming up to Easter. Oscar, good morning. Buenos dias. Hola, Nicole. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I imagine that it must be quite upsetting that at this moment you're not preparing for your football camps. Tiene que ser una desilusión y preocupante que ahora mismo no estáis preparando los campos de fútbol de Semana Santa. Uh, yes, uh, it's a pity, but uh, we we can do it. Uh, uh, we are we are working on uh, on the on the camp in, in summer, the summer camp, and uh, hopefully we can we can do it uh, at the first of July. Yeah? But uh, we have to see uh, what's happening in the in this month. Yes, I hope that by the summer all of this will have been forgotten. In the meanwhile, though, you are part of incentives within the community to help us. And chatting the other day, you mentioned that through the Rotary Club of San Pedro, they were doing an incentive with masks. One day I received a, a really nice mask uh, from Vanessa, who is uh, helping to, to Rotary San Pedro. And uh, it was a really nice mask uh, that I received by in my computer in my in my telephone, and I said, "Oh, it's really nice. Uh, can I have can I have one for uh, for my wife, uh, Paloma?" And Vanessa sent me um, very soon in seconds a really nice mask for with the name of Paloma, and I said, "Oh, okay, I can can I have uh, another one for my son for Javier and and uh, and." So I, I, I saw that uh, it was a very nice mask that the people like a lot. And um, I said to, to Vanessa, OK, why not uh, you can uh, help me to put with my football club one of the masks, first Costa del Sol, another one with Maria Football Academy. And um, uh, two days uh, later, I received a, a message from, from Vanessa saying that, uh, OK, we can uh, uh, raise funds, we can uh, make incentive to to pay two euros and you are going to receive the mask in, the, in your computer, your telephone, but as well your, uh, your mask in your house. I said, oh, it's great. I'm going to, to, to put in my, to post in my, in my uh, in social media. Uh, and, uh, and the people is, is start to say, oh, it's really nice. Some friends, from, in, some friends in Madrid, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, buying mask, uh, mask to Vanessa, and I'm really happy to to help uh, to people, no? Because at the end, it's something that is 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 important in this time to to be useful for the others. You're talking a lot about Vanessa, and which Vanessa are we talking about? Vanessa Ortiz de Zarate uh, is a really nice uh, person who work in in Nueva Andalucía. In the is uh, the right hand of Cristobal Garre. And uh, she is in charge of uh, so social services in in New Andalusia area. Um, uh, he she she always try to help uh, everybody and, uh, in, the, in this area, and is a person who is easily to uh, to, to rise to 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 call. If you call Vanessa, uh, she's always uh, to back to you. And um, she is very useful in the, in Andalusia in the Andalusia area. She helps a lot of people, and is uh, is one of the person that I I'm I'm really happy to to meet her. Uh, well, it's very they're very busy now more than ever, obviously, with this issue. And I know that they're doing everything from housing the homeless 
to making sure that everybody is fed. No one should be without a home right now because we need to stay home, stay safe. And if you right. would like a virtual or a real mask, then contact the Rotary Club of San Pedro because I'm sure they'll be delighted to help you out. Oscar, thank you so much for chatting. It's been lovely to see you. The same thing, uh, Nicole, you look uh, right. Uh, thank you. I hope you and your Paloma and the boys and everybody are entertained. You look like you have a nice garden to hang out and a nice chance to be the whole family together, I suppose. Yeah, yeah we are, we're enjoying the, one of the good things of this uh, state is that we can uh, stay together and we can uh, enjoy with the kids and, and Paloma. Uh, so it's, sure it's the, the, the good part of this. Uh, I'm sure they're so grateful. It's really, it's one of the upsides, as you say, of this. Well, enjoy, relax, rest, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. We're for the future project. So we are, I'm, I'm, I'm totally um, uh, enjoying with the with new project that we have. So I have to work as well. Huh? And we'll have to speak again. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. A big welcome to Linda Wooden, a very active volunteer for Age Concern Marbella San Pedro. Linda, how are you? I'm fine, but gosh, what a change from three weeks ago, isn't it? It surely is. How are you and James coping with the lockdown? Well, I literally haven't left since Saturday, uh, two and a half weeks ago, haven't left the house. But James has been very conscientious and gone out once a week with a little shopping list and uh, we're coping luckily we have a nice outside space that we can sit and look at and if it's nice weather we can sit out on our patio but um, it must be jolly difficult for people who haven't really got an outside space it must be awful for them certainly i have a little balcony and i am most grateful i have to say also, we're all very grateful for all the work that Age Concern, our best Sandwich is doing. Although there is a lockdown, nothing has stopped. The helpline is open. But with the new restrictions imposed by the president of Spain last weekend, there was quite a panic with the putting a stop to home deliveries. Yes, well, especially for a, you know, a company like ours, or not a company, a, a charity like ours, because we now have... Uh, about 54 people that we are feeding every day in conjunction with um, Society Magazine, which are a well-known magazine in Marbella area. They have been absolutely outstanding, um, feeding as many people as they can and working closely with people who are cooking at home and the food needs to be delivered. And we have young volunteers, which is fantastic, that have actually gone and every day they will leave the food outside the house and obviously walk away. Then the person has to come out and collect their food. But the panic was on because they suddenly changed the law and said that we were no longer allowed to have any restaurants open or deliver food to anybody. And uh, for the last 24 hours, um, Stephen, who's one of our committee members, has been on the case with the police, with the local mayor, and luckily, late last night, he got given the go-ahead, and he's had to supply the actual information of every single volunteer that is going to one of the homes to actually say, this is the person and this is what they're doing. So the police have a record of exactly who is walking and going where, which is great. Thank heavens that we have this association in place by the time it's needed. What kind of people are receiving the food and what kind of people are requiring this help? Well, we have the most amazing um, man who's 95 years old and he obviously says he's not a very good chef and he is delighted with what's happening for him and an 87 year old man. Um, that also, you know, finds it very difficult to go out and about. So the two of them, I would say, are absolute stars. There are quite a lot of people that are extremely handicapped in their, you know, age. And, of course, they're terrified of going out into the streets for anything at all. So we do have volunteers that are helping to do that. But 
most of them are elderly people who can't cook really you know for themselves and obviously they had people going or delivery people going that they knew very well in their barrio but um, that's all stopped for obvious reasons but it's wonderful to see how the community is really coming together every adversity they say produces new opportunities linda thank you so much for chatting it's really nice to see you yes and you i i would like to say one last thing if i may um our chairman tom has said please to thank all the wonderful wonderful people that have offered as volunteers to assist in any way that they possibly can and really we are so grateful so are we thank you so much take care nice to see you you take care too bye just believe it